Okay, let's look at an example here of the sinusoidal response in kind of a very simple little circuit. Because what I want to do here is illustrate why we're about to go down the path we are in terms of learning a new form of mathematical analysis. So what we have here is a circuit where I've got a voltage that's sinusoidal. Vs is equal to Vm times cosine omega t volts. So I've got a sinusoid and I built a circuit with a resistor and an inductor and a long time ago I closed the switch, turned this thing on so that current could flow around this loop. So once I close that switch, some current I sub t began to flow through the resistor and through the inductor. So what happened to the current in that inductor when I first closed that switch? Well, a long time ago, if you had looked at that and first turned it on, you would have seen something like this. If you had looked at the current back when the switch was closed, it would have started at zero and then it would have slowly have built up until finally it had reached a value where every cycle looked exactly the same as the one before it. So it would ramp up in amplitude until finally we reached a point where the amplitude remained steady. So we'd have this kind of behavior if we trace the amplitude. All right, now this portion here where the amplitude was building up over time, that is the sinusoidal transient response. And guess how long it takes for this sinusoidal transient response to basically build up to its maximum value and then quit changing? 5 tau. So in other words, 5 times L over R. So the rules still hold. That sinusoidal 5 tau, tau pardon me, that exponential 5 tau rule of thumb would still be here. There would actually be an exponential response on top of the sinusoid. And that exponential response would trace out the magnitude of the waveform. So once you get to this region here, from one cycle to the next, nothing changes. This region we call the sinusoidal steady state response. Now, we're going to study this in circuits one. The sinusoidal transient response you would learn about in circuits two. We're not going to worry about this right now. You'll learn more about that if you take circuits two and learn about Laplace transforms. And you'll study this region. We're just going to concern ourselves with this region where from one waveform to the next, the voltage is identical or the current is identical. So that's what steady state means. Sinusoidal steady state means that the waveform is identical from one period to the next. Now note, this is not the same thing as steady state as we defined for first order circuits. It's a different thing. In this case, obviously the voltage is changing with respect to time, but it simply keeps repeating. And so we call that the sinusoidal steady state. So this is the region we're going to concern ourselves with. 
All right, so how would we calculate I of t? If we were to solve for I of t, we would write that Vs is equal to I times R plus L di dt, which of course is just equal to VL. So this is equal to VR, where this is the voltage across the resistor, and this is the voltage across the inductor. So we've actually looked at something similar to this before when we were looking at first order RL circuits. Only now VS is a sinusoid. So in this case, we're going to write this out and we've got VM times cosine omega t is equal to I times R plus L di dt. And we want to solve for I. What is I as a function of time? Well, we're not going to go through and do this all the way through because what we need to do is solve a differential equation in terms of sinusoids. So what we would do is this. I'll just try to set some of this up. We would assume that, just as we did before, we would assume that I has a certain form for its solution. It's going to have the form I of M cosine omega t minus theta. Let's just assume the current has that form. It turns out that's a good assumption because in a linear circuit we are going to expect to see the same cosine omega t in a linear circuit. Except we're going to have a different phase angle, we're going to have a different magnitude. Okay, so looking at this, that means that di dt will be equal to minus omega times im times sine omega t minus theta. And therefore, Vm times cosine omega t will be equal to R times Im times cosine omega t minus theta minus omega L times Im times sine omega t minus theta. And so from here, if we apply some trig identities, and I won't bother to go through the details, then what we will find is we'll get two equations and two unknowns, and we will get these following two equations. and this one. We'll get two equations. So we do apply some trig, ident trig identities and go through and basically do some math, which I'm just skipping over, to try to go from here to solve this and we can solve for these two equations and what we will get is that we get the following that im will be equal to vm divided by the square root of r squared plus omega squared l squared and theta will be equal to the inverse tangent of omega L over R. And so therefore, after quite a bit of mathematical manipulation, we get to this point and we can plug it into our form of our solution. And what we will get is the following.
that I of t will therefore be equal to Vm divided by the square root of r squared plus omega squared L squared times cosine omega t minus the inverse tangent of omega L over r. And this will be our solution. So we'll plug these parameters into that and we get this for I sub t. And that is the solution to the differential equation. This is the steady state solution. All we had to do was solve a differential equation using sinusoids to do it. But keep in mind, this is with one source. It was with one inductor and one resistor. And you would have to go through quite a bit of math to get to this point doing this by hand. I didn't bother to do it because it wasn't really relevant to what we're going to be doing in this class. We're not going to be solving differential equations in the time domain. Because the problem is, I had to go through quite a bit of effort to get a solution for a single loop circuit with three elements. What if I gave you a circuit with three loops and eight elements or multiple nodes and you wound up writing KVL and KCL equations for each mesh or each node? You would find yourself solving differential equations simultaneously. Can't do it. The math becomes completely intractable. The problem is, is it's very difficult to solve practical circuits using this technique. It's very, very difficult to solve sinusoidal circuits, or I should say sinusoidal AC circuits, using calculus. In fact, very difficult is the wrong phrase. It's essentially humanly impossible. More than 100 years ago, when engineers were starting to basically wire the country and wire the world for AC electric power, they began to realize that analyzing and predicting how those power networks would behave was beyond their mathematical skill. They didn't have computers. They didn't have any of the modern tools we have. They couldn't go through and rely upon a machine or a calculator to solve their calculus problems for them. So they basically were at a dead end. They needed better math. And in fact, that's what we're going to learn. There's a better way And that better way is phaser analysis. As we're going to see, phaser analysis lets us analyze sinusoidal AC circuits without having to rely on calculus. In fact, we're going to do it st strictly with algebra, but we're going to do it with algebra using complex numbers. So we'll look at that, look at the fundamentals of how we're going to do that next time.